Hi, this is Amy, and today I'm going to teach you how to use Jing. So the first thing that you need to know is that you want to go to the Jing website, techsmith.com slash download. I don't know. It's really long, but you don't need to worry about it. Here's a short URL that will get you there, or you can just Google it. You can type in download Jing free, and you'll get there, or here's a short URL. It's goo.gl forward slash capital B, capital F capital S, capital R, lowercase c. So you'll want to download that and get it installed. Depending on what plugins and stuff you've got on your computer, you you know, it may take a while. So don't don't do this 5 minutes before you want to use it. Once you get it installed, it's really easy, but sometimes you have to download all kinds of other stuff to go along with it to make it work. All right. So here we are and we've got it installed. Jing is installed on my computer. And regardless of whether you use Mac or PC, it runs up in the corner like this. So here's my Jing Sunshine up here. And I can click it to make the options pop out. And as far as I know, this is the only software that works like this. So it's pretty cool stuff. So I'm using another screencasting product to show you Jing. So it's I know it's it's a little confusing, but stay with me. What I do when I first start to make a Jing is I always make whatever I want to record smaller than my whole screen. Like I've got a wonderful big monitor on my desk, but I don't want to record the whole entire screen because that's going to make a huge video file that I'm going to have to upload to the internet and then the other people are going to have to stream. So I just shrunk my window down as you can see. I'm about to record this window. I'm jumping right here. And I just made this kind of small because I don't I don't want to fill up your whole screen. I don't want to take up all the bandwidth for my school district. So now I'm going to pop Jing out and I'm going to click on this crosshairs option right here. So when I click on the crosshairs option, it's going to black out everything behind my one window or I can choose to click, hold and drag down if I want and just select this window like that. But one way or the other, I'm going to be selecting a space on my screen and the space I'm selecting is what's going to be highlighted and everything in the background is going to be darkened. All right, so now let me see if I can move this up a little bit so you can see. All right, I made my window a little bit smaller and now I'm going to do my crosshairs again so that you can see my buttons down here. So now I'm going to click on capture a video. And um, so there we go. I'm going to be recording twice. Don't know how this is going to work. We'll see. But now you can see that Jing is recording everything that's happening within this window here. So now I could, so let's say, for example, I want to show somebody how to use Google Maps. So I'm going to go to Google Maps and I'm going to find an address and I'm going to use Street View to look at something. So let's say I've, I've recorded all of this in this window and now I'm finished. I'm recorded, I'm finished, I've talked, I use my voice, um, my microphone is on, there it is right down there. The number one best tip I can share with you is that when you mess up, pause. So hit the pause button, you know, gather yourself. Don't plan on spending a bunch of time editing this because nobody cares. I, I, I hear more back from videos where I make mistakes and have to work it out while the video is playing. I get more positive feedback from that than any ones I ever edited. So don't try to make it perfect. If you did this live, it wouldn't be perfect. So don't worry about making it perfect. It doesn't matter. You're a person talking to other people and everybody wants to feel that. So just pause, regroup, regather. Uh, you can even go to a new page if you don't want people to have to watch you, you know, flip over from Google Maps. See, this is paused right now. So they're not going to see this. It comes back up. It's going to look seamlessly. So maybe you want to flip over to Twitter now and look at something there. So you can do that, resume your video, and now it's going to start recording again. So you can see I only have five minutes on this tool. That's as long as I can talk on here. If you want to do longer, there's another tool called Snagit, same company, costs a little bit of money. I think it's about $20 for educators, but well worth it if you want to do longer, unedited videos. If you want to go all the way and you want to edit your videos, then you use Camtasia. But remember about editing, overrated in this case, in my opinion. All right, so let's say we're finished. So we're going to click the Finish button. And we have an option now to type a name for this video. Don't do what I did. Learn from my mistake. My mistake was I made these videos for, I don't know, like a year. And I didn't name any of them. 
I, the defaults seemed fine to me. I sent them out immediately. You know, I never went back to them. Later on, people were like, can you send me that video again? Well, I'd love to, but I have no idea what that video was called, so I just had to do it all over again. So now I name all my videos like this. I start out with what the tool is, and then I type what it what the video is. So this is Jing, how to use demo, and I'm going to type that in there because I know what I'm doing now. So there we go. You do that from the beginning and save yourself a lot of time and effort. Now, this button's like magic. I'm going to click share via screencast.com. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start doing this while we keep talking for a minute. Depending on your internet speed, this is going to go fast or slow. Depending on how much of the screen you choose to record, this space I'm recording is 978 by 710. That's going to make it take longer if your space is bigger. So you can see my internet's doing pretty well right now. And now let's look at this box before it goes away. Your capture has been sent and the link is ready to be pasted. View on screencast.com. This is wonderful. We don't need to view it on screencast.com. Well, we're going to do that, but we don't need to click the link. We just sit and smile and be happy that it's up on screencast.com because that lets us do something that's almost like magic. So now I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to pretend, let's pretend that somebody has answered me, has sent me an email. And that email, the answer to that is going to be in this video. So now I'm going to reply to them in real life. So you know, you know what that looks like to reply. So I'm just going to create a new message here. And then I'm going to say, here's your answer. And now I'm going to hit Control V or Command V, depending on whether you're using Mac or PC. And there is the link. Now let's look at, I'm going to send this to my other email account so that you can look with me at what it looks like to the recipient. So let's say, uh, there's your question and we're going to send and now I'm going to flip over to my home email account and we're going to read that email. Alright, so here's the email I just sent from my work email account to my home email account so you can see my recipient sees this link as underlined blue. It's a hyperlink. So when my recipient now clicks this button, they're going to get a web page that has the video in it that we just recorded. So now they just hit play really obvious what to do and now here's the video that we just made and let me flip forward so you can see I don't know if you can hear it or not through here but it's every single word that I said while we were I won't make you listen to it again but but you get how it works so let's pretend that you want to take a presentation that you're working on let's just use this one as an example and you want to talk through this presentation and actually show it to someone normally you would full screen this because you want them to see the whole big presentation on the screen but remember we're screencasting now so we don't really want to make it that big so what we would do is pull down Jing and just show our slide now you know that you can see the rest of my screen because you're looking at a screencast within a screencast. But my viewers are only going to see what's inside this box. and I'm going to make it small. My video is going to be plenty big for them to see and it's going to save a lot of time and, and save my network. So now I'm going to capture a video. I'm capturing just what's going on inside this box. And now I can flip through this presentation over here. See what's going on inside the yellow box is good for my viewer. So I can do all of this stuff, go through this presentation, provide my information, and now we're going to do something different with this one. So I'm going to click Finish again, and remember our pattern. Um, this one, though, I'm going to delete it later. So I'm going to label it AAA so it goes to the top and delete. But now I'm going to do the same thing, share via screencast.com. And now this time, now this is kind of advanced like you may have learned everything you want to know for today and that's okay but this time I'm gonna go and see if I can get the code to put this inside a web page or a Moodle course so when I go to my video and I go to share I get this kind of scary looking code down here but don't be scared by this this is nothing to be scared of see how it says copy and paste modify width of desired we're gonna Control C, highlight all of that. Control C. Got to, the only trick here is you have to get all of it. A little bit of it won't work. Get all of it. Now I can go back to my 
web page, view as HTML, put that code in there. While I'm viewing as HTML, save it, and this video will actually be on my page. In a Moodle course, you can put this in as a label, and this video will show up embedded on the page. So embedded means you're not going to see all this stuff around. You'll see your Moodle course around there, and you'll just see this video out there in the middle. So you can really teach something like this. So this video, this concept is sort of foundational for Flipped Classroom, for providing online staff development. Um, and it's, it's kind of a powerful little concept, isn't it? It's such a small thing, but it really, this one packs a punch. So I hope you learned something new. Um, tweet me and let me know how you like it or what email me. Let me know what you learned from it. And I uh, hope that helps you out. Have a great day. Bye-bye.